My father, Andranik Vartanian, was born in 1900 in the village of Hasku on the plains of Mush, near the principal city of Daron, the heart of historical Armenia for more than two millennia and the cradle of Armenian culture. His immediate family was comprised of his parents, two sisters, two brothers, and a fraternal grandmother. His extended family of 48 lived in three nearby homes. Prior to the Armenian Genocide of 1915, the Armenians of Hasku were periodically terrorized in order to force them to flee to Russia. It was in 1906 that my father witnessed his mother being stabbed by a Turkish soldier with a bayonet. My father, here and after Papa, has said that he is grateful she died from this wound and did not have to experience the genocide. Although the Armenian Genocide started on the evening of April 24, 1915, the Armenians in Hasku and the surrounding areas had no knowledge of massacres in other villages. It was the day of Vartavar, the festival of roses when people sprinkled each other with rose water, that Turkish gendarmes led Kurdish women and men carrying daggers, axes, shovels, hoes, and pitchforks to descend on the Armenians of Hasku. Since Papa's large house was at the edge of town and protected with high walls, the neighbors fled to his home to hide. Papa ran and hid in the courtyard among the large storage jars and piles of branches and twigs gathered for kindling. He hid there while they killed everyone they could, women and children alike. He watched Suleiman Chahush kill at least 10 of the youngest children by striking them against the high walls made of rocks, shattering their skulls. The people hiding in Papa's house were brought out, stripped of their clothing, and tortured by having their stomachs torn open. When it was dark, the gendarmes and Kurds retreated. Papa wandered from house to house and found some relatives. At midnight, his father, who had been in the fields with their livestock, came to find him and to look for Kurken, Papa's older brother. Oh, my father, you know, <laughs> when they start killing, my father that night came. That night came and she we were all gathered another big house. Our house was empty. They had seen it. There is empty. He, he, he came, talked to me. He said, I take you. We go uh, Honey River side, hide us in the bush. So she, he took me. I have a dog, and dogs follow this. Mm -hmm. And just edge the river, river is thick, some kind of bamboo, mm -hmm. hiding ourselves there. Mm -hmm. My father and me. So the after. The gendarmeries and horseback, the hundreds ran all around fighting to kill to run. They had come close to us when my father and me hiding, and our dog would us. When gendarmeries come, our dog bark. Run after the horse. Uh, oh, gentlemen, is hiding. Uh -huh. They can. 
They took your father then? They caught my... What did they do to your father? I drove. What did they do to your father, Papa? They killed. Right the, then, in front the, of you? The, uh, my father only had a dagger. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't have a gun. Yeah. They caught my father. My father was a big man, all oh, six feet, a strong man. Yeah. Uh, three, four cuts, dagger and gun. They, they didn't shoot. They said the bullet is worth the, yeah. the man mm -hmm. again. So, mm -hmm. they, they, my father tried to get Turkish, uh, Kurdish gun, mm -hmm. but one cut had hidden my father's writing, and my father whispering, throw yourself in the water. So, I throw myself in the water. Yeah. I was very good swim. Oh. I because every day summer I used to swim oh. the deep the, yeah. so I swim far away yeah. and cut they took all my father's clothing. Yeah. Nothing left on and they go. What did you do with your father before you My, you know, that next, you know, yet it was not quite alive. I went, they had took my father's clothing, nothing was left on. Everything. I and his it. watch? And ants, and he did, you know, they like, yeah. I pulled my father's, you know, was far away the water, where the river uh, yeah, is sweet water and soft yellow sand. Yeah. I pulled my father close the water in, and I, with hands, I picked sand. I rolled my father in and covered with sand. Papa has always told us that he drew a cross in the sand and made a cross from a willow branch and placed it on the grave. He never discovered how his brother Kurken was killed. Later, when Papa was a captive of the Kurds, he was told of his sister's death. My sister, Koharik, she been very beautiful, beautiful. They, they call, uh, you know, Tim Curtis, they last far away. They have heard her, you know, Kurds, they are, you know, made did they large. Did they take her or what happened? What happened they, to her? They, she had Kurds. Um, Amudo then had uh, to take her. So they had, after escape, she had to run, throw herself in a river, and a river, deep river, kill herself, a river. Yeah. So, after burying his father, Papa ran back to his relative's home, which still sheltered some survivors. They decided to go to Kolosik, a small nearby village in the middle of two valleys, which Papa describes as resembling a pulpit made by nature. On the way, he saw hundreds and hundreds of women and children butchered and stacked on top of each other, stabbed and impaled in the genitals. Mothers had been killed with babies on their breasts, some of the babies dead, and others still alive and trying to nurse at their mother's breasts. Horrified, Papa and the remaining survivors who had set out for Kolosik turned back home 
to gather in the Church of the Holy Trinity, which was already filled with women and children. They prayed Der Vohormia, the prayer of forgiveness. After sunrise, the gendarmes, Kurds, and one German advisor came to the church and ordered the people out. When they refused to come out of the church, the soldiers attacked with machine guns, killing people and destroying the altars. Papa has said that with the destruction of the altars, he felt that God had been killed. Those who survived were brought together with thousands of others from surrounding areas and forced to walk for days or be killed. About two day walking reached the village. Did you have any water or food when you were walking? No, no. I'm no water. That they, they, they drive as far away from where the water or thing. No, nobody. And sometimes women get little. I see that we walking. A lady have a, a little boy, baby, yeah. baby. and that is quick, quick me, sister, please, wait, pips, mm -hmm. pips, let I have it. She said, oh, quick, sister, it's seven days I have it. one drop of water, and I see it's it's feeding the child thing. Mm -hmm. It's dry. Yeah. It's crying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. So they look and that only put us in a great big barn. Yeah. Barn. Like you know, like getting fish putting in barn. Yeah. So in barn. So I, I was fortunate, pushing, pushing, pushing. I been reached at the wall. I see the whole there wall. The villagers had opened the wall. Uh, the wall. Summertime, the dry the thing where they put hay, not be molded the thing. Yes. Yeah. I slipped up from. Mm. That's how you were able to escape. I slipped out about from here to go. Part that the children's house there yeah. was a ditch. I dumped it mm -hmm. in mud and bamboo. Uh-huh. And then and then, and then the boys this came some day caught gender mesh poor gasoline and match. Yeah. But so I was very good good knowing how to go toward the mountains. Yeah. And before, you know, all uh, the teachers said, boys, girls, you gotta know your country that you five finger from to eye. Uh -huh. From to your eye. Sometimes that save your life. So I hide myself in bamboos and beach. When it started dark, I start going toward the mountain. Papa found Baloo's a school friend who also had survived, and together they hid in the mountains by day and forage for food by night. Tribes of Kurds were hunting still for survivors whom they would kill or hold captive. So the Kurds, when I had come, the Kurds, one down there, rocks there, he wants go around, puts feet, just rock over blue feet. He had full of blues out wood. And there is hatchet. A, a thing. Hatchet? 
long handle, wooden handle, yeah. and here is like like this sharp to cut wood, to cut yeah. things, and have hidden bruises here. Yeah. Cut raw, uh, raw uh, the, the things, but that dead. Oh, was, uh, I barely was not dead. Mm. Ribs, but oh. I barely. Please, one drop water. One drop water. Yeah. Make cattle chew. Make cattle chew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can go after when all the cuts go. I had hat. Handmade, like tapestry made, good hat. I went for the water, the water was running. I put, I took the blues, he drank, oh gosh. Mm -hmm. After, until midnight, he cried, he cried, died. Mm -hmm. And next morning, I decide to be dead, but to hide myself. I didn't hide myself. It was winter when Papa was accosted by a band of Kurds. One of the Kurds recognized Papa as Bezair's grandson. Papa's grandmother had been very kind and had always given food and drink to the Kurds who would bring wood and apples from the mountains to trade for grain. The Kurds took Papa to hold him captive and to work caring for the livestock that they had taken from the Armenians. Papa, when you were sent into the barn to get jewelry and things, were there any children? Oh, see, when, uh, when I gave myself to Kurds, Turks, the Turks, they gathered us to search the house, burning places, and corpse before they, you know, have the thing to get gold, bracelet, uh, bracelet things. So that house, I was searching the. Turks were sitting in high things there, there, and drinking arach, arach vodka, and, and, and eating. And they had decided if that day we don't find anything, they're going to kill us. Mm -hmm. The old woman, the king and me, so I said, bar, you know, that bar, but an old lady standing dead, choked to death in me. The but thing is, uh, you know, Buddha. Beams, wooden teams had uh, fallen so much to a team. She's not fallen this way. Just back to board and like standing like a life. Life. So the Armenian have habit have very nice, nice, it's made like that thing. Mm -hmm. Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple. Mm -hmm. I see woman standing in the back is a wall, wall and think timbers and think had fallen to think is that well, on this way yeah. is there. So I went to the to her. Yeah. I went to her. I lifted the apple. I see little girl, like her thing, a golden thing here, piece. 
and silver top and golden in here, golden hair, golden hair. See, I took two gendarmeries, oh, gendarmeries, be so happy, so happy, and they decide not to kill me. So, and the next day, they killed me. Papa was held captive for a year and somehow survived. Since he was not given food, he would steal bread and gather apples and hide them in the stable where he slept. Whenever the Kurds discovered him stealing food, he would receive a beating. And you see, there was cruel things Turks had organized that anyone, anyone in his house, you know, it have happened when I had to give up myself winter to that Kurdish house. They needed me because I take care sweeping the all day. So hard work for me. But I have enough to eat, yeah. and and have happened that house I was I was one Kurd, uh, Kurdish Kurdish you know mullah preacher mm -hmm. had come that house that house where I was was. Uh, you know, the chief's house. They make him for shish kebab, things eat, and the uh, wash the beard, the hand, and so on. After eating so well, he said, you know, any house I go to eat and make namas, wash myself in that house. There is Gaur, Gaur, not God, believe yeah. the Christian believe that Gaur. And, and the Haram mm -hmm. is not clean for me if yeah. I eat that. Mm -hmm. So, that would be killed. Anyone that his house gobbled that. Mm. So, my aha could my ear, for what this, I got my house. So, others they brought, others they brought, doesn't like my age, boys, they brought. Yeah. One, my play, we've been together, crawling, uh, studying, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Torkom name. Torkom? Name. Mm -hmm. Torkom. And have had that Torkom mother, when we pregnant, to give birth, my mother became pregnant, unfortunately, to give birth to me. And they, summertime, they, the woman, they come, she, you know, throw mad seed and tell stories. Mm. And Torko mother and my mother, they say, Kurik, they are pregnant. They say, Kurik, if one be born, one be girl, they bury together. See, they make. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my mother gives me mm -hmm. birth to me. <laughs> and her mother gives uh, boy. boy. <laughs> and we grow together. My brother. My, he has been all the time together. Day and night, night, summer day, outside, we sleep on mat. 
Arctic, moon, stars. Mm -hmm. The oh, day it can't go swim. So beautiful. Your life as a child. So and chess, chess, ducks. Yeah. Ducks? Yes, ducks. ducks ducking now. Wow. So what happened to him, Papa? Oh, so happened that after months when I escaped the burning barn with mountains yeah. after giving. Yeah, they brought him to yes. your village. And what happened? After after months was winter. Yeah, Papa, you told that part. Yeah. You were you were telling us about they brought uh, all these boys together, all the infidels together. And what did they do with I, you? I killed Stalcom. How did mm. that happen? They, you know, the mullah yeah. went eat shish kebab, everything, yeah. Yeah. and they say, yeah. so they want to make fun, uh, play. Mm -hmm. They had put a two gun to war. Yeah. Two gun. Mm -hmm. In one gun, large bullet. Okay. In one gun, no bullet. No, no live bullet. Like me and Torkom, they guns into war. They say, we will go get a gun. I went, Torkom, we went together. I lift again. Torkom lift again. See, I didn't know in the gun there is a large bullet or no. Torkom didn't know. So, they're about 12 feet from each other and, and ordered to shoot. I shoot and kill Torko. My gun, my gun had life bullet. I killed him. So, they, they make a joy. That's who my being. Despite the destruction of his spiritual childhood, Papa found strength in reading the illuminated ancient manuscripts which the Kurds had taken from the churches and stored in piles to be used as tinder. It was winter again when the Kurds heard about the Russians advancing and decided to go further up into the mountains. Papa took this opportunity to make his escape down the snow-covered mountain on a sled he fashioned from branches and twigs. He was rescued by Russian soldiers when they saw him make the sign of the cross. Riding an ox cart, Papa was taken by Armenian volunteers to an Armenian orphanage in Akhilkalak, Georgia, and then to Armenia, first to Gumri, and finally to Yerevan, where he saw thousands and thousands of people dying from hunger and typhus. He was fortunate to be selected by the British Relief to attend the Armenian Seminary in Jerusalem in order to become a priest. Before taking his final vows, Papa decided against the ministry and made up his mind to go to Iran, where he eventually became a pharmacist. He married my mother, Navart Orduhanian, whose Armenian family had been in Iran for several generations. After World War II, my father and mother and I immigrated to the United States. <laughs>